So, Mr. Laurent, thank you for coming by for the third time now. Thank you. Ex Always a pleasure. Excellent. Uh, so let's talk with your financial results. Mm -hmm. You published uh, recently a good quarter. You returned uh, to prof profitability. So what are the key elements that have allowed you to turn to prof profitability? Well, it's the second quarter in a row now that we are profitable, as you indicated, mm -hmm. uh, a strong profit of 2.5 million on a top line of 7.7 .7 million. And that top line is actually a critical mass of a growing number of clients that are now approved by the FDA uh, and relying on our filtering technology for their manufacturing process. So the growth that uh, we have now seen and will see more of uh, is a result of more clients getting a, their own respective approval mm -hmm. with our technology embedded in their process uh, and their respective growth because as they launch product with our our system in then they, they themselves grow so the whole thing will pull the, the company up finally excellent yeah uh, in terms of revenues because I know um, in the last interview you said that we're not some worries, but all those revenues are going to be recur recurrent in the future. Yes. Well, I mean, I, I mentioned the word embedded, and that's mm -hmm. quite important to understand. Um, you know, in, in our field, it takes a long time to finally get a product from an idea from bench to market, right? Yeah. It, take, it may take 10 years for a, a blue chip company to bring a, a drug to market. Now, once we're used as the mean through which the pharmaceutical company will make the drug, Okay. that they I finally have approved. Yeah. We're locked in for the life of that drug. All right, yeah. so that creates annuity revenue going forward. So as much as we printed red ink to finally get there, you start printing black ink and exponential because those, those products finally just drive the demand up. You can't stop it, there's no stopping, right? There was a question from one of our viewers, uh, it's an email we received. It's about, uh, it was questioning the reliability of the filters because the as you mentioned that there's some FDA approval that has to that has to go on but how do you respond to his fears or his question about the reliability of, of, of your filters well I mean uh, not 38 multinational uh, can actually have their own PhD sign off and and spend well they spent collectively over 260 million dollar with Prometic and getting their fil our filters approved in their process our filters get used in the process when the drug is still in the manufacturing stage, it's not gone into human yet. Mm -hmm. It has to be approved before it even gets to human. Okay. And then the pharmaceutical company goes through its phase one, phase two, phase three development. And um, well, we've been approved by FDA, EMEA since 1992. So there's been no technology failures. In fact, anything that can point to where the stock was 10 years ago and where we are now, as uh, attributable to Katrina, the terrible hurricane that hit New Orleans yeah. and uh, forced the Congress to revisit the mission of American Red Cross. That is what um, affected the most our stock, would you believe? I mean, next time I'll write a business plan, I'll think of <laughs> the effect of hurricane on, on your performance. But, but that's as significant as that. And uh, there's been no technology failure. So we always, always work with, right? Our model is enabling technology provider. Mm -hmm. So we're working with the scientists of other uh, manufacturers, specialists of uh, other pharma company for their product. They're funding us, okay. right? I mean, in the, in the difficult times where we couldn't have access and most companies that unfortunately disappear from the map, they couldn't access market the access to capital. Mm -hmm. uh, we were we received eighteen million dollar at five percent interest non secured loan from those guys who are saying you guys can go bust. We need to fund you so that you can keep on supplying us okay. with the technology. So yeah, we're in good shape. We're in good company. We have now a growing number of clients and finally some of our clients are themselves happy because they're commercial with their products and it's uh, it's finally a good spot to be in to print black ink. Excellent. Now you have two quarters two consecutive quarters yes. where you guys made some profits. So you're on the verge of reaching your objectives for, for the end of the year. So what yeah. will be your growth target for next year? Well, I mean, we'll actually will exceed the target that we had set for ourselves. Uh, back in April, uh, we've announced to our shareholders that we were expecting to secure $21 million worth of business, okay. which is hard to translate as this revenue. We were asked all the time the question, with gap in IFRS nowadays, mm -hmm. yeah. revenue recognition, especially when it's interpretation of whether a license fee is all uh, recognizable, whatever. So we're prudent in our, in our estimate and guidance. So we said we'll secure $21 million of business and we'll probably beat that, uh, uh, not probably, we'll beat that uh, guidance 
uh, in terms of revenue. So in f the revenue will be north of 21 million uh, in, in this quarter, which then you can just deduct and it's going to be a strong quarter, a profitable quarter. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next year we'll see another growth because most of those revenues are recurring mm -hmm. and growing. So expect a growth for 2013. I think that we'll uh, wait a little bit later in the year to make sure that we, we, we provide a guidance that we can also, again, keep the market on its toes and, and beat all the time, right? Uh, under deliver and no, under promise and over deliver, as they say. Okay. So I think as we build the credibility again, listen, I mean, there's fatigue with sh some shareholders and it's an opportunity for newcomers to come in and say, <laughs> look, at the, look at the gap between the value and, and where we're trading. Okay. I mean, even if we're catching up and growing, I mean, I, I can't today, mm -hmm. honestly, uh, probably every CEO you'll have on your show will tell you their stock is undervalued, but right now we're talking about an insane gap. You know, okay. between where we should be trading and where we're trading. Okay. It's like, I would use the word insane. <laughs> <laughs> and insist on it. <laughs> so recently I was looking at the news of your company, uh, two, major, two major deals that were signed, two major partnerships. Uh, one with uh, Shenzhen and Paling Pharma and one with Nen Pharma. Yes. Uh, explain to our viewers uh, the two diff how those two partnerships will impact your company. Let's start first of all with Shenzhen because it's more recent, and after it, let's go with Nent Pharma. Absolutely, okay. Well, Ipeling Shenzhen is a, um, it's a multinational based in uh, Shenzhen, obviously, but it exports most of what it's doing to, uh, to the U.S., to, uh, to Europe. It is the world most significant supplier of heparin mm -hmm. to the like of uh, Sanofi Aventis, Fresenius, to name some. Um, it, it is listed on the Hong Kong stock market, and I, I believe it's probably an $8 billion market cap company, okay. so it's not a small player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they need us to uh, improve on some manufacturing process for some of their product, and uh, we've signed an $11 million licensing agreement, $2 million up front, and $9 million spread over certain uh, development milestone achievement. There will be an additional um, funding mm -hmm. uh, revenue source for uh, tweaking and optimizing for their purpose, all right? So expect, again, that to hit 2013 okay. in terms of revenue. Uh, they also have taken a 10% stake in the company at premium. They paid, when it was announced, 63% uh, premium to market. We were trading at 12 cents. They paid 20 cents, 0.4, for $10 million investment. Um, this is um, uh, the second time we're taking strategic investment from, uh, from players. The other one is Dr. Sun Xiong with Abraxas then. Um, and we can talk more about that deal. But so Ipalink is a kind of a hybrid deal where they took an equity position, strategic, because they know they, they, they simply couldn't believe the, yeah. the gap, as I mentioned to you, and they willingly paid that. And they know that on their own, their own uh, business with us will drive uh, the revenue up. So, I mean, it's a pretty good uh, return on their own investment. Uh, in the, in the, uh, with the other company, Nant Pharma, mm -hmm. Nant Pharma is a joint venture between Blackstone, which is uh, the largest fund in the States, 190 billion under revenue, under management, and Dr. Sun Chiang, who's the wealthiest man in, in, in California, has made his billions selling good ideas and good products to Fresenius for $4 billion and to Celgene for $3 billion. Um, and always been quite clever in, in improving on something that was already on the market but make it better, safer. And that's exactly what we do. We okay. provide filters that enable a manufacturer to improve its manufacturing yield mm -hmm. and or get rid of impurities that cause uh, side effects. So if you combine both, you end up with a best-in-class Mousetrap, right? So that's what we're enabling, and that's what Blackstone and Patrick Sun Chung are betting on, bringing a couple of those better improved products to market in the States. We've retained the rights for outside the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, which enables us also to, to, to leverage uh, even more. But all that critical mass of clients, and including Hippolink Investment, uh, has enabled us to kickstart our plant in Laval, our new facility in Laval. Yeah from where we're going to be manufacturing biopharmaceuticals for our, our, our clients. Okay. So increasing, again, the value chain in, in our, in our uh, supply process. Okay. Let's stick with the Laval, because uh, you just mentioned your, your factory at Laval. Yes. Um, uh, we saw that you wanted to increase in the uh, value chain, go, yes. go up yes. in the value chain. Yes. So what's the purpose of, explain to us what does that mean exactly, because I know you guys are producing filters. So yes. What does that mean by right. you want to go up? And also for your factory in Laval, what's going to be its purpose? Right. Well, I in reality, with most clients, what we do is, as you said, we make filters mm -hmm. in the UK, right, yeah, in our subsidiary UK. UK, and we, we sell those filters to the pharma. 
in some cases we collect royalties. Mm -hmm. When we start dealing with pla drugs that are actually extracted from blood, from plasma, mm -hmm. all right, not every facility can actually take plasma in their facility okay. from a regulatory point of view. So even if companies were attracted by the offering of our platform technology, mm -hmm. not being able to actually deliver them the actual goods, the finished product, extracted from our filters was a, a challenge. So oh. we needed that platform, that manufacturing platform, and it was always too expensive to build it. This is a 40, 50 million dollar just to have a pilot plant. Okay, that facility was um, our first big break with uh, Quebec institution. We have to thank INRS, Institut National de Recherche in Science um, in Laval, who um, had a facility that um, was used and into which Glaxo invested back in 2004 mm -hmm. to make H1N1 vaccine. Okay. They operated that facility, brought it to FDA, uh, EMEA standard, and we and, and they, they got more money from Quebec to, to build a bigger one in Quebec City. So uh, Glaxo ended up the keys to INRS and we ended up having access to that facility on a very favorable term for 20 years. Therefore, being able to leverage now, now just not making the filter, but sell to our clients, our licensees, the actual drug made out of or through our filter. So, yeah. so increasing the value back to our shareholders. Excellent. Um, so in terms of um, the, the funding, uh, yes. are those partners, uh, Sh Shenzhen and then Pharma, will finance this, uh, th those developments for in your factory in Laval? Well, it, it is. <coughs> something that we, you know, with Ipilink, they accelerate our ability to deliver now. Okay. Because, uh, you know, we didn't want to finance uh, at 11 cents and or at discount of 11 cents. It was crazy for, for, for uh, the dilution that we could have uh, sustained uh, doing going that scenario. And then we knew that profitable quarters are uh, were on the horizon, but yeah. then how long do you wait until you generate enough free cash to, to implement the plan? Mm -hmm. When Ipilink came along, it was a deal at premium, strategic, they have to to hold the stock for three years. Uh, they're a big client. They're pumping $17 million of business at the same time. So that was a, a gift from the sky, right? Okay. Let's close that deal, take advantage of that uh, cash inflow so that we can accelerate the plant. Okay. All right. So okay. now that enables us to not generate just revenue with the facility in the UK, but start generating revenue as early as Q4 next year okay. with that Laval facility and without affecting our liquidity, right? This is this yeah. is the, the big the big kicker for us. In terms of the margins, are the margins like higher with the, the with the, when you want to increase the, in the value chain? Well, yeah. The the, 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 well, it's you know we'll blend all kinds of uh, things in our revenue mix, of course, but uh, we're we're tracking towards 73% gross margin right mm -hmm. now, which is a blend of service revenue, license, and and product sales. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, so it's contributing to to that upswing of revi of uh, margins as well. Excellent. Yes. Uh, Let's talk about your factory in Laval, because that's, I think, one, uh, a big project for, for next year, for Crucial of 2013. That's where we should expect something out of it. Um, are, you make, are you planning to make additional investments? Because I know Galaxo was there. They already uh, bring some portion of the plant uh, to be FDA, FDA approved. Um, so you guys are going to just make a major overhaul uh, on that plant to be able to uh, be a, a reliable supplier of... Uh, yeah, of the company. It's a good question. In fact, there was over $22 million invested by Glaxo, mm -hmm. and most of what they did invest uh, is useful. And that was the reason why we were so interested okay. by, by that facility. There's some leasehold improvement, uh, some equipment to bring in. We'll okay. announce some partnerships on that front because okay. a lot of other companies wants to be exposed yeah. and be involved in that showroom. It becomes a showroom. It's, it's one of the sure. first uh, plant. In fact, CNBG in China has built a plant now with our technology. So the Chinese were up and running before us okay. but the first showroom and actually GMP FD approved plant will be in in Laval okay, okay. and you're looking at two and a half three million dollar of leasehold improvement and and with the equipment uh, so it's it's not a major overall it, it all proportion given that a plant like that would have cost about 40 million to, yeah. to get started so and three years that's yeah. the difference now we're gonna be operational in two three quarters exactly. big difference um, well, when last interview, you always knew that your subsidiary in England was your cash cow. Right. So, are you planning right now to kind of diversify your cash cows and making the facility in Laval becoming one? Well, I would call, you know, not diversification, but kind of uh, integration. 
Okay. It's more of an integration of activity as as uh, as can you, you elaborate can, on that? Well, of course. I mean, it's it's you know, the UK will keep on doing the filters. Okay. They're doing it very well and this has room to grow. We have elasticity there. We can make 100 million dollar without major investment in mm -hmm. in that facility. Because I, I mean, so for people to understand, when you have the infrastructure, you make uh, small little batches or big batch. It's just the size of the kettle. True. It's the same man, same infrastructure. So mm -hmm. expect to see a lot of money coming to the bottom line as soon as you pass your break even, yeah. as you grow. That's sure. what people will start seeing. How come you make so much money earnings? Because and once you pass your fixed costs, that is the minimum to be... Uh, allowed to be operating in that market from a regulatory point of view, every dollar that you print above that break even, 70 cents goes back to the bottom line. All right, so it's, uh, it's a very profitable business if you can survive it and, and, and thrive in it. But uh, Laval ends up being a plant where you actually use our technology. We take the UK filters, implement the manufacturing process on behalf of a uh, pharmaceutical player. Okay. So we are actually manufacturing something that is worth maybe 10, 10 15 times more than the filter itself okay. in Laval. Right? So the growth of the entire group will, will continue being the number of clients that requires the need for our filter, their own respective growth, so needing more filter each, and in some cases, some companies that says we can't handle blood in our plant. You guys handle the blood and you give us the active drug. So now all of a sudden each one of those clients represent a huge jump in our revenue. So that kind of revenue mix is what will be the trajectory <laughs> in terms of our, our pickup in terms of revenue coming forward. Excellent. Um, so, so just to, to finish, let me start with Laurent, uh, quick questions because the interview is going to end soon. Um, why should an investor look at your company? Just two reasons why you should look at your company. Well, R&D is behind, solid client base, um, you know, proven, and uh, now it should be an investment decision, not a speculating investment. That's what I would say to okay. the investors looking at us right now. Excellent. So, Mr. Long, I hope to see you for our next quarter 2013 for the factory in Laval when it will be open. And thank you again for coming by. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you.